Welcome to the fifth dimension. Most of us would agree that we live in three-dimensional space and time is commonly regarded as a fourth dimension. What is then the fifth dimension? The fifth dimension is scale. To appreciate the significance of this simple statement, let us first reflect on what dimensions actually are and why we use them. It seems appropriate to start with noting that three-dimensional space and time are not some objectively existing properties of reality, but only mental constructs of the human mind. They are concepts. They have emerged and exist because they are practically useful concepts that help us to survive, to succeed, and to prosper. And they are practically useful because many objects in our world are invariant in relation to transposition in space and or time. Consider any object around you, a book for example. For all practical purposes, it is the same book as it was one hour ago and as it will be in one hour from now. Also, if we move the book in space, it remains structurally unchanged, meaning that the relationships between individual parts of the book remain unperturbed when the book travels in space and or time. Notice, please, that in essence, any object in our world is nothing else but an organizational pattern of the relatively stable relationships maintained between the object's constituent parts. Therefore, all the objects in reality can be conceptualized as organizational patterns. The invariance of organizational patterns upon transposition in space and time is in fact that what makes our world predictable and comprehensible in the first place. Such an invariance provides us with reference systems, it allows us to compare, to measure and to model, and as a consequence to make relatively correct guesses about the past, the present and the future. Now, if we happen to discover that certain organizational patterns of vital importance for our lives exhibited invariance upon transposition along some property of reality that was continuous and all-embracing, it would be only a failure of our intelligence not to consider such a property of reality as a new dimension and to ignore a new source of predictability in the world we inhabit. The self-organizing fractal theory of living matter, the soft for short, suggests that scale is such a new dimension. See it for yourself. As we speak, countless organizational processes are taking place at multiple spatial temporal scales inside and outside us, all at the same time. At one scale, self-organization of amino acids leads to the emergence of active proteins. At another scale, self-organization of proteins and other molecules leads to the emergence, maintenance and functioning of living cells. At yet another scale, self-organization of living cells leads to the emergence, maintenance and functioning of tissues and organisms. In turn, self-organization of organisms leads to the emergence and development of ecosystems, business organizations, economies, societies, and so forth. It was recently realized that scale-specific organizations, such as proteins, cells, organisms, organizations, economies, and ecosystems, can be in fact conceptualized in equivalent terms, namely as self-organizing adaptive networks of energy, matter, information exchanges. Think of the protein molecule as a network of interacting amino acids. Think of the cell as a network of interacting proteins and other molecules. Think of the organism as a network of interacting cells. The organization as a network of interacting individuals and so forth. Because different scales of biological organizational hierarchy are nested and interdependent, proteins, for example, function within the environment of a cell, while cells at the same time function within the environment of an organism, and organisms in turn function within the environment of an ecosystem or organization, and so forth. It was recently suggested that living matter as a whole constitutes one evolving multi-scale continuum, composed of the interacting and interdependent adaptive networks of energy matter information exchanges. These networks coexist and coevolve at multiple spatial temporal scales and are interpreted by the human observer as proteins, cells, organisms, ecosystems, organizations, economies, and so forth. The continuum of living matter itself can be thought of as one enormous self-organizing adaptive network arranged in a hierarchy of nested economies, environments, organizations that continuously influence and morph each other. The reason why living matter is not normally seen as a self-organizing unity, 
but rather is perceived as a collection of poorly compatible and thus naturally antagonistic parts, is the inadequate and misleading manner in which the Western mind and science have come to conceptualize living organizations. Due to historical reasons and current vested interests, the Western mind is compelled to conceptualize living organizations as machines, or a species of the machine, and correspondingly to study all living organizations by reverse engineering, in other words, by taking them apart and studying all parts in isolation, on the naive presumption that the fact of isolation does not change the part being isolated, and that there are some predefined and immutable relationships between parts to be discovered, a hidden design, in other words. On the one hand, this mechanistic way of comprehending the world propels technological progress and economic efficiency. But on the other hand, because the mechanistic mindset does not make and is not able to make a distinction between living organizations and non-living objects, it is responsible for virtually all known disasters, atrocities and crises that plague the world of living. And this includes practically everything that really matters for us as living human beings. As a substitute for the misleading mechanistic image of the world, consider the Russian doll Matryoshka, or similar toys from other cultures, which interestingly enough happen to correctly reflect some essential features in the organization of living matter, namely the nestedness and self-similarity of scales. Matryoshka is a self-similar set of increasing sizes dolls, with the smallest doll nested within a bigger doll, which in turn nested within a yet bigger doll, and so forth. In the same way as dolls of a matryoshka, different special temporal scales of living matter are also nested and self-similar, according to the self-organizing fractal theory. Notice that such a self-similar arrangement means that once you know how one of the dolls looks like, you know how all dolls look like. Once you know certain organizational patterns in structure and dynamics at one scale, you know organizational structure and dynamics of all scales. Once you know a part, you know any other part and the whole at the same time. The essential difference between living matter and matryoshka is that scales within living matter, unlike dolls within a matryoshka, form a continuum, where different scales constantly interact, influence and morph each other through exchanges of energy matter information across scales. In other words, living matter behaves as an alive and self-conscious matryoshka, in which when one doll in a set starts smiling, others begin smiling too. When one doll in a set starts crying, others are compelled to cry too. If one doll in a set has a problem, other dolls will have the problem too. According to the self-organizing fractal theory, such a behavior of living matter is an inevitable consequence of the continuous maintenance of self-similarity across scales enforced by economic competition and evolutionary selection. Returning to the idea of the fifth dimension, the self-similarity of scales in biological organization and dynamics implies that certain organizational patterns are scale invariant. In other words, there exist organizational patterns that do not change upon transposition along such a continuous and all-embracing property of reality as scale, thus establishing scale as the fifth dimension. To conclude, please use your own imagination now to think about all the power that comes with the ability to predict organizational structure and dynamics at all scales simultaneously, from molecules, through organizations and economies, to ecological and planetary phenomena, from the past through the present and into the future.